Hello everybody and welcome back to Turning Tuesday. Oh, we got a fun one this week. I think it's gonna be a fun one. I have got some Banksia nuts right here and I have got a pepper slash salt mechanism that yes, I am gonna try and get inside one of these things. This is gonna look awesome. Let's get going. So this is probably the most amount of thought I've ever put into a Turning Tuesday project. I mean, I've actually filled up four pages of drawings. This is unheard of in Turning Tuesday. Normally I just sort of, yeah, that'll do, and then get on turning. But I've tried to put a bit of thought into this because this is gonna be a gift for my mum's birthday and I wanna, I wanna get it right. So I'll talk, you through, um, I'll talk you through what I've got here. I've been messing around with trying to work out if I want to do a more traditional design, such as this kind of thing. So it's got beads and whatever that thing is on it. I've got no idea on any of the turning terminology. So something traditional like that was a possibility, or there is like modern things like this that are more sleek, but then I ended up putting traditional things into it and it just looked dreadful. Um, and then there's ones, I mean, that's pretty much the same thing. This one, everything just, Nothing looked right when I was doing it, and it's because I'm, I'm pretty sure it's because I've got no idea as to what actually looks right with turning with regards to adding beads and like coves and proportion, no idea. So what I thought was actually something like that, just nice and simple, a tapered head and then a tapered body on it going the opposite way. No fancy coves or anything like that. It's just something nice and minimal and it's just gonna let the Banksy and that do the talking because I think if I was to go to something like this where it's more curvy and stuff, there's just gonna be too much noise going on and it's not gonna look right. Generally, with all my other projects, I like to let the material do the work with regards to the design and I'm gonna continue that today, I think. Now you'll know what it's like when you go to a fancy restaurant or you go to a friend's house and they've got the salt and pepper on the table. And unless the salt has one hole in the top and the pepper has like eight holes, oftentimes you have no idea what's actually in either of them. So you think, I want a bit of pepper on this beef. I go put some pepper on it and you end up turning it into jerky because you put so much salt on it. Like I have figured a way around that using well, I think I figured a way how to do it, using the holes in this Banksia nut to let you know what is inside. And the way I'm gonna do that is with epoxy. And I've had three different ideas as to how I can do this. First one is to add clear epoxy to it. So you could possibly see through the holes and see what's actually being stored inside this. The only problem is I'm not sure, because this is the first time I've turned a Banksia nut, I don't know how far down those holes actually go and if you'll be able to see the contents of the, uh, of the pepper mill slash salt mill without having to open it up. So then that led me on to my second thought was if I don't want to commit to doing something clear, I could do something literal like putting pepper in epoxy and then cramming that into the holes and then turning that. But I don't think that's gonna look good. I think pepper is just gonna look like I've shoved loads of gravel in here and putting salt into the epoxy, I feel like that might do something weird to the reaction. I don't know what would happen, but I feel like it wouldn't be good for the epoxy. So salt and pepper cast in epoxy, I'm not sure that would work. So what I thought was I could just kind of find the middle ground of those two and fill it with epoxy, but then dye that epoxy. The first one just being white epoxy, maybe having a little bit of gray in there as well. So the holes are sort of variated, some are white, some are gray, and it's just sort of different all over. And then on the pepper one, we'd have brown, we'd have a bit of gray, we'd have some black as well. And just try and mimic those colors without going too literal with it. And as for the construction, I've got two slightly longer Banksia nuts here, and these are going to make up the main body of the mechanism. And then I've got this spare one here, which I'm probably gonna chop in half. And then either half of that will make the top, the twisty bit that you use to actually activate the mechanism and grind the contents inside it. So the first thing I need to do is cut these little nubbly bits off either end of each of the nuts. And then we mount it on the lathe and we get turning. So what I 
plan on doing with these Banksia nuts is taking each of them down to 70 millimeters in diameter because the mechanism, which I have lost, is 45 millimeters at the bottom here. And I obviously need a bit of extra material either side of that, but I don't want to turn this down to its final dimension first and then start cramming epoxy in because that's just going to be messy. So I'm going to take it down to 70 millimeters to start with, cram the epoxy into the holes and then leave it overnight. Once it's dry tomorrow, that's where I'll finish off refining the shape and it should make it nice and clean around those holes. So that's what I'll do to begin with. All three nuts down to 70 millimeters in diameter. I'll see you on the other side. Okay, so first observations. Ow, this stuff is like glass when it comes off. <laughs> I realized how much that probably looked like blood on screen there. It's, um, it's this. Look how fluffy this is. It's absolutely beautiful. But yeah, I guess all these like little bits here, they're just coming off like bullets and they really hurt, really hurt. It's just like little shards of glass coming off and shooting your hands. But unfortunately you can't use gloves on a lathe just in case they get caught. So, gotta carry on. Okay, so I've just spent the past Oh, it's probably been an hour now, picking little seeds out of these Banksia nuts because they are right down in the bottom of these holes. So I've got some really fine tweezers. I'm sort of picking them out where I can, loosening them on others, and then just <coughs> whacking it on the table to make the remaining seeds come out. And I'm pretty confident I've got the majority of them. So now I'm gonna start adding the epoxy to these. And to be honest, like, I'm quite concerned about the depth of these holes. I think that even if I try and cram as much epoxy into these as possible, I reckon I might end up turning through them and then exposing a new hole underneath. So I'm gonna try put it over the top and turn it down and then hope that there's still epoxy remaining. If not, it's not the end of the world. I'll just put another layer on and do it that way instead. So if you wanna try this in the future, you'll know how close you actually, oh, there's another one there. Tell you what, they are fun to get out though. But yeah, I will, um, I'll see what the results with the epoxy is, see if it's worth putting it in before you turn it to the final shape or after you turn it to the final shape. So I've got various pigments in this package here. This was just something that I found on Amazon and apparently it works for resin. So if it does work, I'll put a link to it in the description. If this goes horribly wrong, then I shall not be doing that. So I'll pick out the colors that I want. I'm gonna start with the, this will be the pepper one. Uh, in fact, there's gonna be a bit of everything in that, isn't there? Ideally, I wanted a black in here. Ah, no, I've got another black one. There you go, so if I do that and I take out the, probably that gray one, that's not gonna to look too nice in there. Although gray and white will look quite good for the, ooh, magic gold. Oh. Blooming hell is magic gold. Yeah, I think those will be our color schemes. So pepper, and then I might put a bit of the white in the pepper one as well, possibly. No, I'll probably just do that, that'll look better. So I'm gonna mix a fair old bit of epoxy for this. Okay, well I must say the colors have come out absolutely beautifully, especially these brown ones on the end. Like the colour in these, that just looks like chocolate pudding. Oh, making me somewhat hungry. Like, oh, wow. Mmm, yes. So I'm also going to add some microfibers to these in order to thicken them up slightly so they're slightly more of a paste as opposed to liquid. And it should be easier to uh, sort of get them into the holes that way. And again, not really sure how much to use. I bought this stuff years ago for a certain project and it worked quite well. Um, yeah, let's have a look. Okay, so on these two longer banks here nuts, one of them's obviously salt, one of them's pepper, and this third one, I'm gonna have to sort of separate it halfway and put a pepper one in there and a salt one in this side. I'm not actually going to separate it, I'm just gonna sort of put the colors either side and then separate it afterwards. 
Ah, okay, this is gonna be messy, isn't it? Very, very messy. Um, yeah, I mean, the child within me is absolutely love it. Oh no, I ripped my glove. Oh no. Uh, as I was saying, the child within me is absolutely loving this. It's like playing in mud again, but I'm not sure this is the right way to go about doing this, to be honest. Uh, I will have to see what it looks like once it gets turned. Now to do the other three. Okay, so we're back the next day, and first observations, ow, these things are very, very spiky, and two, I don't think this is gonna have gone all the way to the bottom of these holes, to be honest. I think, I think I'm just gonna get one of these on the lathe, to, oh, in fact, no, there's loads of holes missing there. Oops, yeah, so I'm gonna have to get one of these on the lathe and just start creating that final shape and just see if that epoxy has actually got down to the correct depth. Let's have a look. I actually need to uh, flatten off the bottom of this anyway to remount it in the chuck later on and make sure it's actually spinning straight. Word of warning on Banksia dust, it is so, so slippery. I've almost gone over multiple times already. Well, the colors aren't really as prominent as I'd hoped, but perhaps when I sand it down, they'll be a little bit more obvious. Um, there is quite obviously some voids in this as well. Uh, so I think I'm gonna have to take this down to its final shape and then fill it with epoxy after that. The thing that's challenging with this is that I need to get it down to the required diameter first in order to fill the holes with epoxy, but ideally, I would drill out the center first and then get it on some sort of jam chuck, turn down the diameter and then be done. The problem is I can't drill out the holes before putting in the epoxy or else the epoxy is just gonna fill the cavity inside. So hence why I'm turning the profile first and then I'm gonna do all the drilling and like, yeah. This is challenging. So then according to the instructions, obviously that is where the bottom like mill bit is gonna be. Up here, I need to create a 38 millimeter diameter mortise in the top of this in order to accept a tenon coming from the top twisty section that's gonna hide this entire mechanism. This, <laughs> but yeah, this is certainly a challenge this. So considering this needs to have a 38 millimeter mortise in the top, I am going to take it down to 50 millimeters, that should leave me a six millimeter thick wall either side. Yeah, 50, and it'll also allow me to get rid of these last fluffy bits as well. As for the bottom, that's gonna have a 45 millimeter mortise in the bottom to accept this, and I will take that down to about 60. So 50 tapering to 60.
Okay, so it's now a couple of days later and I'm starting to think that I've done a little bit of a silly here. Uh, I have coated them in another layer of epoxy to fill out any of those other voids that were left over after the initial coat, but I'm starting to realize now that perhaps I should have drilled the internal holes and the tenons and everything before shaping the outside of this because this tapered thingy, specifically these ones actually, are going to be very difficult to hold in a chuck while drilling the set. Well, it's not going to be difficult, it's just going to be awkward and it's going to leave jaw marks left over on the finished piece, I suppose. So yeah, if I was to remake these, then I would turn all the internal gubbins before shaping the outside. So I'll begin by flushing off everything I have here once again, and then I'm going to undercut the bottom and the top slightly, which will make it a lot easier for me to remove this little nub left over at the end and still get a flat bottom. Once I've got that flat bottom, that will go into the gripper jaws on the headstock, and that should hold this straight enough in order to drill the center. Hopefully, we'll see, we'll see how it works out. Right, so the first hole that needs drilling is a 45 millimeter section in the bottom, 19 millimeters deep. I'll just make sure this is properly wrenched around because I do not want this slipping. Oh, it's getting a wee bit smoky when I'm doing this. I hate it when this happens. I'm so scared of setting off the fire alarm and then having to evacuate the buildings next to me. That would not be ideal. So now I need to drill even further. Oh Lord, this is gonna be challenging. Need to go to a depth of 53 millimeters overall, apparently. And with this one, I've actually got a sawtooth bit as opposed to a forstner bit with like knife points on the side. This has sawtooth, which should help clear the waste a bit easier and will give me a quicker, ah, hot, hot forstner bit. Ow, ow. Uh, yeah, should give me a, better, quicker cut that hopefully will burn less. I don't really know. Uh, but I'm gonna wrap a bit of masking tape around the shank of this at 53 millimeters so I can see exactly how far down I've drilled. Okay, so at the bottom of that hole I just drilled, I need to get a little recess in the side of it in order to accommodate the little tab that's on the bottom of this mechanism. Now, there is a specific tool to cut this recess. It's kind of like a right angle scraper sort of thing, but I don't have one of those. Now, I am not encouraging you to do this, but I have made my own tool that kind of replicates that recessing tool. All it is is a bolt screwed into a threaded insert in the end of a long bit of wood. And that bit of wood is quite wide, so it's gonna prevent this from twisting on the tool rest. Obviously that bolt isn't going to be as hard as a proper high-speed steel tool, and I'm sure there is ways to harden it, but don't know how to do it. And I just wanna see how this thing works like this. Now, as I said, I'm not encouraging you to do this. It's just, you're gonna see this happen, so I might as well explain what's going on here but um, please don't try this yourself. We'll see how it works out. Well, it certainly wasn't pretty, but it has, has worked. There is definitely a step there, and I think I've got it to about five millimeters deep, just sort of judging by how much these calipers drop. So, Pretty happy with that. Now I just need to continue the 25 millimeters hole to go about three quarters of the way up apparently. Uh, and then once I've done that, flip it end for end, 
drill another mortise in the top of this as well as a 25 millimeter hole to hopefully meet up with this one. Right, well that took the best part of a few hours. It's looking pretty good though, I'm quite happy with it. So now let's do exactly the same process on the second one. Okay, so both bases are drilled out. Very happy with that. Second one was a lot quicker. Now, the top section is what we need to turn our attention to. Firstly, I need to drill a hole in the bottom at 22 millimeters in order to accept the stem at the top of this mechanism. Then, on the bottom of that, I need to turn a 38 millimeter tenon to fit within this hole. Now, those of you that are long-time viewers of Turning Tuesday know that I am very bad at getting these tenons accurate. It usually takes me a few attempts to get this right. I've got one attempt to do this. If I get it wrong, then this is just going to be all sloppy and... Uh, moment of truth here. Okay, so apparently the twisty bit on top needs another recess inside it, which starts 14.8 millimeters from the start of the hole. I had no idea this project would be this complicated. <laughs> like, <laughs> wow. I think it probably would have been a lot easier if I actually had a dedicated recessing tool rather than this piece of garbage but there we go so i'm going to put a little bit of masking tape around it which will act as my depth stop and then uh yeah get cut in that recess Okay, so I've just made a block sort of thing to hold in the headstock, which is a friction fit within the bottom of the mill. And then the life center just about grabs onto the top section or the hole within the top section. So this is all secure in here and I've got access to the entire face. So at this point, I need to get this down to the required diameter, spot on, and this down to the required diameter and start sanding it off and everything like that. Um, I am, well, I'm considering trying to mount the entire thing once it's assembled into the lathe afterwards and then fine finishing it like that, but it depends if I can work out how to actually do that. For now, I'm going to try and get this as accurate as possible and then obviously match it to the section up here.
So I've created another tenon that sort of wedges into the bottom of the pepper mill. And then in the tailstock, I've actually put the headstock of my pen mandrel in there. So there's no point on this. It's simply just a, let me get this out. Simply just a flat end on that. And that is putting pressure against that little stub there and preventing this thing from falling off. So when you turn it on, it's all good. Look at the state of this. Who would have known that making two of these pepper mills would create so much mess? But, oh yeah. Okay, so I've got it down to their final shapes, but as you can see, there's still holes and stuff where the epoxy hasn't quite bottomed out in there. And the reason I put the epoxy in first before turning this shape and before drilling out the holes was because if I now try and put epoxy into those holes, there's potential for it to leak within the actual thingies themselves, which won't be ideal. Um, now, I, I don't know. I don't actually know if it is gonna get far enough to actually kind of go inside. The only bit I am worried about is pushing it in from the outside of this mortise and then it goes into the actual mortise itself, thus affecting the fit of the tenon. So yeah, I don't know. I've just got to fill it at this point. I don't want holes. So um, we'll do that and then come back tomorrow and hopefully get this thing all assembled and finished. Because to be honest, I'm bored of looking at these by now. <laughs> <laughs> 